All right, so should you increase your GLP-1 medication? Should you cut it down? Are you on too much? Today, I'm gonna share with you the four questions I ask my patients. You should ask yourself and share with your doctor in order to determine the correct dosage for your GLP-1. And this is going to create a sustainable weight loss experience that isn't hurting you in the long term. Now, to get on the common ground here, I'm talking about all GLP-1s. We're lumping them all together. We're talking about semaglutide, terzepatide, so Ozempic, Wegovi, Zepbound, and all of the above. The GLP-1 medication landscape right now, if you're being prescribed by your primary care doctor, a medical spa, or something in between, doctors are prescribing this for the most part the exact same way. In that month one, you're getting a starting dosage with semaglutide 0.25, with terzepatide 2.5 milligrams. And they're going to monthly walk you up an escalation ladder. For the most part, doctors are doing this whether you are losing weight or not. And typically, the answer to you not losing weight is simply just bumping you up one more step in that escalation ladder, independent of what medication you're on. But this is how GLP-1 medications are being prescribed. With this standardization, we see the death of personalized medicine. Doctors are not taking into account the unique experience in their patients' weight loss journeys. So today, with these four questions I'm going to ask you, these are things you're going to want to share with your provider. And when they do, or if they do recommend an increase, these will act as topics for you to be able to have an informed conversation with your doctor about your specific dose. Question number one is the most interesting, the least obvious. It is what does your blood work say about your current dosage? Let's take a look at a 53-year-old female's labs, and I will show you what she was doing and what I recommended. When we look at functional labs for Jane, we are really trying to determine what the level of insulin resistance is and metabolic disturbance. So this is a really good example of a person that has a high level of metabolic dysfunction and a high level of insulin resistance as well. So her hemoglobin A1C is 6.3, which is in the pre-diabetic range, not undoable, not unsavable by any means at all. But when it comes to the insulin, I believe her insulin was, here it is, 18.8. .8. So anything under a 5 is ideal. Anything over that, like 5 to 10, a little bit less serious, but definitely needs to be worked on. Over 15, now we're starting to get into a, a little bit more of a serious range. A typical range patients usually come to me is usually in the 10 to 25 range. The reason why I want to show you this example is, is this woman was trying to microdose. She started off on a half dosage of semaglutide. So starting dose is 0 0.25 milligrams of semaglutide. So she was on half of that. She did not notice anything at all. She had no appetite suppression. She didn't feel any different one way or the other. And she was, she had watched some of my videos and she was kind of defeated. She was a little frustrated because it was like, hey, you know, I've heard you talk so much about microdosing and other doctors like Dr. Tina talk about microdosing. It's not helping me. And I just want to say that there's no shame in needing to take a little bit more semaglutide when there is this level of metabolic dysfunction. So there's a lot of insulin output and there in this in this t case, there typically needs to be a little bit heavier dose out the gates. So I would justify a starting dosage of 0 0.25 milligrams. And I did recommend that she bump up to that. She did. And we then we increased it shortly after to every five days. And that actually got her a level of appetite suppression. She felt good. She wasn't experiencing side effects and started to lose weight on that dosage as well. So I wanted to give this as an extreme of, okay, what does it look like when someone actually needs more medication than they're taking? They may not feel anything at all. And this is the blood work to back it up. Now I want to show you the opposite, equal and opposite end of the equation. We have somebody who was on terzepatide starting dosage two and a half milligrams, very, very successful, had dropped about 25 pounds, was nearing his goal weight. And you can see his hemoglobin A1C is down into a normal range, 4.8, and fasting insulin is well under five at 3.2. So this is somebody who was actually still experiencing quite a bit of hunger suppression. And when I saw this, I realized, okay, this is somebody who needs to start to decrease their dosage. They don't need all that appetite suppression anymore. They're not needing as much support in the insulin department. The blood sugar is already controlled. And this is somebody where that level of medication may actually be doing more harm than good. 
he was within reach of his goal weight. And so it was time to bump him down. He was on a compounded product. And so we bumped him down about 20% and it didn't really impact his weight loss at all. And at this point, this is somebody who had already implemented all the right things in terms of correct diet, correct amount of exercise. He was on all the right supplements. He'd been working with my team and I, we've been running blood work like this for some time, optimizing, and it was really just time to start weaning him off the medication. So let's dive in to the last three questions. This is the meat and potatoes of it. I'm very passionate about this. So it may seem extremely obvious, but question number two is simply, are you losing weight? And I kind of quantify weight loss as at least two pounds per week. Let's just say that you're losing two pounds per week and your doctor tells you that it's time to increase your medication. I would pump the brakes and just simply ask, can you explain to me the benefits right now versus the risks of me increasing the dosage. The reason why is, is you want to spin the doctor's wheels a little bit. If you're already losing two pounds a week, well, what's the next question here? Well, question number three is, is are you getting any side effects? The most common side effects by far with both semaglutide and terzepatide are going to be constipation, bloating, digestive side effects, and nausea. So if you are losing weight and you are not having a high degree of side effects, then that is the Goldilocks region, my friend. I would not recommend increasing that dosage likely. Now, let's just say that you are not losing weight. Then there are many other things that you want to evaluate at that point. I would, from a functional medicine perspective, I like to evaluate hormones. I like to evaluate all of these metabolic markers. I like to check all of your inflammatory levels. Essentially, we're trying to evaluate what else might be blocking you and the GLP-1 from doing its job at that given dosage. And we want to try to come up with a good answer to that question. And we call that the root cause, so to speak. With question number three, are you getting side effects? If you are really nauseous, if you are constipated or you have other digestive symptoms and your doctor's still trying to increase you, I would urge you to try to resolve those first before increasing your dosage, specifically constipation. Just, I, I, this is in theory and also what I've seen in practice 100% of the time is, is if you have constipation and you increase your dosage, that constipation will get worse. So you need to work on it. And we do this through dietary changes, looking at fiber content. I love psyllium husk fiber, working on gut health, evaluating what probiotics might be needed? Is there any other type of digestive repair that needs to happen? These are things that you need to take into account. And question number four. This one is actually my favorite of them all because this one gets blatantly ignored. Here's the question. Are you hungry? If you are not hungry all week long and you are struggling to get enough calories in and your doctor is pushing you to increase your dosage, you really need to stop for a second and ask your doctor, look your doctor straight in the eye and say, hey, I, maybe I'm not losing weight, but I'm having a lot of difficulty eating as it is. Will increasing the medication make that worse? And if your doctor says no, then that's a lie. That's um, unfortunately just not true. Increasing the GLP-1 when you have no appetite will make you further have no appetite. That makes it difficult to get in the protein demands that's needed. It, it makes it more likely that you'll lose muscle and it's going to drastically increase the amount of fatigue. We've all heard about the GLP-1 fatigue. It's real and malnutrition is typically what's causing this. You got hair falling out. Again, malnutrition is the leading cause here. It's not necessarily the stimulation of the GLP-1 receptors. It's more so nutritionally what's happening in your body that's causing those phenomena to occur. So here's another scenario for you. A lot of patients find themselves in this particular scenario. You take your dosage, you have controlled appetite, less carb cravings, things are going really well for the four, first four to five days. And then you notice on day five, six, seven, that those symptoms of hunger are returning. You're feeling like you're having a tendency to need to really control yourself not to overeat. You're wanting to overindulge in carbohydrates and you're craving sugar again there on the day before your injection. What I would consider with my patients, and you may have trouble getting your doctor to agree to this, but 
what I recommend to my patients is, is switching to an every four to every five day injection schedule, staying at a little bit lower dosage. So you're not overwhelming the receptors all in one go. And what we're doing is we're, we're playing into the half-life of this medication. The medication has roughly a seven-day half-life. And so by the time that one-week mark rolls around, a lot of times there's really just not enough of the medication left to go around to give you the same level of stimulation that was giving you the effect that was keeping you in the Goldilocks region, so to speak. And when I say Goldilocks region, I'm saying, hey, we're losing weight. Our hunger cues are, are diminished, but not gone. And we're not getting any side effects. So a lot of times we will use this multi-week dosing strategy to actually keep people in the Goldilocks region and not see that crash that leads to binging and a slide back of progress there on day six, day seven. And then you have the third scenario where you inject and you're not losing weight and you're just simply starving still. It feels like it's not doing anything at all. And in that case, you may be in the same position as Jane, whose labs we just looked at. Maybe your insulin is quite high. Your doctor probably didn't check it, but you can gauge that by your A1C a lot of times. Is your A1C high? If not, it is still possible to have a very high insulin. So that is something to have checked and evaluated throughout this process. And that's the purpose of functional medicine labs, guys. We want to put everything out in front of us so we can identify potential roadblocks in, in terms of dosage and nutrition and supplements and hormones and all of the above before it becomes a problem and you get stuck. And there you have you guys. There is your four question checklist. Are you losing weight? Are you actually hungry? Are you getting any side effects? And then does your blood work back up what you are experiencing in real life? If you are liking this dosing perspective, the functional medicine outlook of care, and you're wanting this applied to you, then go ahead and apply to work with us down below in the link, and we'll see if it's a good fit. Otherwise, you guys, if you enjoyed the video, give us the thumbs up. Go ahead and leave a comment. It helps the algorithm, and I will see you guys next week. Take care.